Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to see how we can fit GMM Gaussian mixture models, uh, not by the EM algorithm, but by GEM, regular maximum likelihood. So we don't have to fit GMM using the EM algorithm. You can also use uh, maximum likelihood. So let's take a concrete example. Let's limit ourselves to the case of two components in a one dimensional data. So suppose this is our mixture uh, at 0 0.3 times the normal distribution with a mean of two and a variance of two and 0 0.7 times the normal distribution centered around minus two and a variance of one. So the PDF of this would look like this. And the log likelihood uh, is just the sum over all observation of the LAN uh, of this. And if we plug it in, it just came, comes out to be this expression. And you can see it's a bit of annoying because we have a log and inside the log, we have a sum. Okay, in the general mixing model, if not just looking at this concrete example, but more generally, it would look something like this. You have a sum over the observation of logs and inside the log, you have a sum over all the components. And uh, yeah, the probability of being in that component times the probability of uh, seeing the data given that you are in this component. So basically this times this. Um, okay, remember that in reality, we don't know the mu's, yeah? We don't know the sigmas, we don't know the p's or the phi's. Um, all we have is our data. So what we have to do is we take them all to be parameters and then we try to maximize the log likelihood, minimize the negative uh, log likelihood, with regards to these parameters. So we can use just regular optimization techniques, uh, for example, gradient descent, et cetera. Th there is no, generally there is no closed form solution. So uh, you won't get what is the optimal mu and what is the optimal sigma. Maybe in this small toy example there is, I haven't really thought it through, but in more complex, in more complex mixture models, uh, finding an analytical solution, uh, could be impossible, but for the very least, it's hard. What you can do is um, find the gradients, at least in this example, and I will walk you through it soon. But the main thing to notice is that this problem is non-convex. So we will use, for example, gradient descent, but we are not guaranteed to converge to the real optimal solution. We can could get stuck in local maxima. So suppose I'm looking at this, and I only want to maximize with regard to mu one. And suppose I have two points, one of them is two and one of them is minus three. And suppose I know all the other parameters. Yeah, so suppose mu two is zero, sigma one and sigma two are one and P is 0 0.3. So if I write down this equation again, mu one is my variable. I plotted it in decimal, so I had to put it as X. Yeah, but uh, the X here represent the mu and here's what I get. And if I plot this, this is what I get. So you can see this is not um, convex with regards to mu, right? If the x axis here is the mu, then you can see I could get stuck here where the true maximum is here. Yeah. So the main point is that it's not convex. Well, how do we find the gradients? Uh, in this case, it's a simple case. We can simply uh, take the gradient of the log likelihood with regards to the mu one, for example. So we have a log of it, we take, it just turns out to be one over this, which is this expression times uh, only this depends on, sorry, only this depends on mu one. So we take the derivative of this with regards to mu one, we get, we get this expression over here times the uh, inner derivative here, which gives us this expression. And why do I color it differently? Well, um, in, this color, we have the probability of X given that we are in cluster J, but remember using base rule, we can also invert this and we get this expression. And this is exactly our P of X. Uh, this is a P of J, the probability of being in the first cluster. And what we get is what's left is the P J given X. Okay, so P J given X is actually this times this uh, divided by this. So we can replace all this big term here with simply pj given x. Okay, so um, pj given x is the 
is how we denote all of this uh, big chunk over here. And we can do the same for uh, mu two. Um, for sigma one and sigma two, I would leave it as an exercise for the viewer uh, to see that it actually is equal to this. For the p's, uh, we have an equality constraint, right? We have that the sum of p equal to one. But what we could do is use a sigmoid transformation, or in case k is greater than two, use a softmax transformation. What it means, it means that the p's are not the, what we are actually maximizing. We are saying that the p's are almost the final um, step of the maximization, but we also then have another parameter that defines the p, and we are maximizing with regards to that parameter. So if we say p is equal to the sigmoid of some phi, it's just equal to this function. You can see that this function is um, between zero and one, and p plus one minus p the, the, uh, will be equal to one, of course. So if we take the derivative of the log likelihood with regards to this parameter, using the chain rule, we can break it down to this. And the derivative of the sigmoid is just the sigmoid times the sigmoid minus one. Okay, so this is just equal, and the sigmoid of phi is just equal to p. So this is equal to this. So all we have to find is this thing over here. And if we do this, we get uh, this expression. Okay, we take uh, basically one over the log and then this minus this, right? Okay, if we develop it a bit more, uh, we combine this, right? We take this times p one minus p. This is just p of x i minus one. This is p of x i given that we're in the first cluster minus p of x i given that we are in the second cluster. And if we develop it more, we get uh, this, right? Because we are moving to the using base rule to the probability of being in one giving, given x i. But we are left here with the one minus p. And for the other one, we are left, we get the posterior of uh, the probability of being in two given x i. Yeah, it's this times this times one minus p. And all we are left with is p. And then if we develop it some more, we get this term over here. But notice that this sum has to be equal to one, right? If you go over all the different clusters that you can have, then this has to be one. And we are left with this expression. OK, but I just derived this uh, analytically. What you could do now is take all these uh, terms and write a software that calculates the gradients and then uh, just do gradient ascent. So just start with some random value of, uh, of your parameters and then keep updating it, right? But we are a bit more lazy than that. So let me switch to R. Again, these are some packages that are needed. OK, and here I create the data. OK, this is how the data looks. OK, we have a center at minus 2 and a center at 2. And here I calculate the minus log likelihood. So we want to minimize this, not maximize this, because I added a minus to it. And I assume that the, in the first iteration that the p or phi's are known. OK, so I only try to maximize for the mu and sigma. Suppose p, p is known. Um, this is the value for uh, the real uh, parameters. So this is um, as low as we can get. And suppose I start with some random value of the means and some uh, random value of the sigmas. I take an exponent of whatever I get here so that I'm always getting a positive number because of course the standard deviation can't be um, negative. Okay, this is the value of my starting position. You can see it's higher than what I had for the optimal. And now I just use an optimizer, a numer numerical optimizer. Um, I give it the uh, starting position. I give it the function to maximize. And I set the inequality constraints. So um, the means are unconstrained, but the variances have to be greater than 0. OK, so if I do this, uh, sorry, if I do this, I find the parameters. We get almost two, almost minus two, um, square root of two and one. Okay, very close to these numbers. So we see it works. But what happens if we do want to try to um, 
also find the piece, okay? We don't take them for granted. Uh, the only thing we need to change is here, instead of giving the P's, we are giving it as parameters to optimize. Um, so this is what happens here. But also, how do we actually solve it? Remember that we have an equality constraint that the sum of the P's have to be equal to one. So there is uh, an NP solver in R. Uh, we just have to set an equality constraint like this. Um, this is the minimum log likelihood that we can reach. Um, this is some random uh, values to start with. We can see that it's higher. And in the solver, we have to give it the starting values, the function to optimize, the equality constraint, which is a function, the equality value, so theta uh, 5 and theta 6, which is basically p plus 1 minus p, has to be equal to 1. The lower bounds, which are uh, nothing for minus infinity for the means, and all the other, the sigmas and the p's have to be positive. The means and the standard deviation can be unconstrained uh, on their upper bound, but the p's have to be less than one. Okay, so we can run this. And uh, we see again, we get almost two, almost minus two, almost square root of two, almost one, almost 0 0.3 and almost 0 0.7. So it worked kind of well. I tried this on some other problems and it didn't work so well, actually. So an alternative approach that we can do instead of using this is use the regular optimization. And instead, okay, so how can we do this if we have an equality constraint? Well, we can use uh, the what I showed you in the analytical part. We could use the sigmoid or the softmax if we have more than two uh, clusters. Okay, so I define a sigmoid function and then the parameters that I optimize are not directly the fees, or in this case, also the sigmas. Are, they are actually uh, further down the line. So the fees are, I define to be the sigmoid of these thetas, and the sigmas are the exponent of these thetas. So this makes sure that the fees are actually uh, between 0 and 1 and sum up to 1. And this makes sure that the sigmas are positive. Okay, and this is the function that I want to optimize. Okay, um, and again, the minimum log likelihood, this is the best that we can do, this is the minimum that we can do. We start with a random value. Now I don't have to constrain it at all. It can be negative, positive, I don't care. Okay, we see that we get a much higher value here. And now we optimize. We don't have to give it any upper bound or, low, or lower bound because we are optimizing parameters that are free to move in the end, the fees will be the sigmoid of the two parameters that decide the fees, and the sigmas will be the exponent of the two parameters that decide the sigmas. And so the sigmas will be positive, the fees will sum up to one and be positive uh, or non negative. Okay, so let's do it. And again, we get very close to minus two, very close to two, very close to one, very close to um, square root of two. Uh, very close to 0 0.7 and very close to 0 0.3. You can see that the cluster changed position, right? So before this, I had um, 2 and minus 2, and I had square root and 1, and 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. Now I get minus 2 and 2, uh, 1 and square root of 2, and 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. So you can see maximum likelihood works also for at least some examples of GMM. In a future video, I might go more into depth about what is better, the EM or the maximum likelihood, which problems can be solved by what. Uh, but this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.